What an honor, finally, to have on stage tonight, Mr. Wayson Mr. Joy. Wayson Joy. Please, everybody. And I'm happy. 
And so I ended up being um, taken care of once again. In 2001, I almost died twice. And in uh, 2004, I had another heart attack and I had a quadruple bypass. And I want to tell you something. It's better to be alive and in good health. So today you have vegetarian food. Right after this, I'm going to Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm sorry, we can't be perfect. But what's more important is, imperfect as situations are, I don't find that imperfect. Next door, they just had a wedding. They're getting married. The two don't know what they're getting into. It's good for them to have a lot of noise and drink. And then, like all of you and all of my family, and all those who hope when they love another person, may it all turn out well. And as for writers, we love hot bits. Talk to me after if you know something about your neighbor. <laughs> I always think of the story Alice Munro wrote, but supposedly it was about her. She and her girlfriend in the old days in Clinton, Ontario, were the nerds. They read books, the English teacher likes them, how awful. So they were walking down the street and just being themselves, but probably nerdy. And along came a car in a convertible, and there were the hip kids there shouting at them and saying to them, eh, bah, you're blah, blah, blah. And Alice Monroe, supposedly, but I believe Alice Monroe did this, she turned to her girlfriend and said to her, you know, they should be careful. Don't they know we're going to be writers? It's been so much fun writing about burning the Chinese school down. And yet, even that bitter experience for me meant that one day it would bloom into something that made Chinatown real. So I thank you all. My life as a person, as a gay person, as a son, as an adopted son, as a friend, as a member of two families in Toronto, one in Toronto and one in Caledon, I've been with one family, Caucasian, for almost 50 years now, and I'm the godfather of their two children, and one recent family, because my father came to live with me when he was not doing well with cancer, and my dear Aunt Mary could not continue to take care of him. He came to live with me, and I had another family, started with a student that I mentored, with him and his girlfriend. My life is unusual, and it said to me what is true about all life. Family is who loves you. Chinatown is not pure, it is not perfect. Some of the rich people that have come entitled from other countries, and I need to add from China, have protested at schools where the JP and E is taught. Apparently some of the teachers tell me they complain that this is a story about peasants. We're not peasants. And it wasn't a story to them about human beings. They don't read the book. They just don't like it. But their family members read it. Their children read it. And I get the response that eventually the family is divided between the new history, the new wave of those who come over here who don't have to struggle because we struggled before them, and the histories of those who, for example, like friends like Nick Chu, Larry Wong, King, oh my gosh, all of you are in this room, the Lees. We are saying to them, we're not as good as you, we're not as bad as you, we are the survivors upon which you stand, and we ain't sitting down. As I said at the beginning, as I told my friends, I'm going to be humble tonight. But I can't be because you're here and I thank you. You give my life meaning because you tell me I have been something to somebody and it happens to be you. Thank you so much. Thank you readers. Thank you to those who don't read but who buy the book. <laughs> and. I can only say I love you all for all the reasons that make it worthwhile. Thank you.
to tell you, my mother and father appreciate the technicians here, the camera people, because they wired the chairs. <laughs> there you are. <laughs>